it's a very difficult question because um, I mean every case is important in a sense. You know, you develop a relationship with the families of detainees, for example, mm -hmm. and then when somebody is eventually released, you're incredibly happy that mm -hmm. that happens. Or if there's a, a, a torture case and you're working either with a victim or with a family on trying to uh, create public pressure for the case to go to court, and, and once that happens, uh, I mean, you know, many people will, will remember, obviously, the Khaled Saeed case as, as one of the, you know, the emblematic cases that, that led to the uprising. Mm. And, and there are many small Khaled Saeed cases, I think, in, in, in different areas. Mm. One of the... Um, one of the more recent cases I've been working on, and I've been in touch with their family, is a case of uh, the last Egyptian in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, his name is Tariq Saweh, mm. and he's been there since 2001, detained by the Americans without charge or trial. And so I've been in touch with his brother and, and his lawyer. His brother is in Alexandria, uh, because these days uh, our call has been to President Morsi and to the Egyptian government to pressure the United States to release him and to bring him back to Egypt because since 2001 without charge or trial is, is horrific. It's, it's mm. like the emergency law but worse. Guantanamo, and we don't need to, mm. to convince most Egyptians that Guantanamo Bay is bad, but since he's the last Egyptian, our hope is that pressure from the Egyptian side will make a difference in his case. Mm. Did you interfere in uh, Ahmed Gizawi's case? Uh, I personally haven't, no. Mm. My colleague who works on Saudi Arabia um, is, is aware of this case and is in touch with some of his Saudi Arabian contacts about it, both in the case of Ahmad Gizawi and in the case of Nagla Wafa, because mm. that is another case where an Egyptian national in Saudi Arabia is being, she's being subjected to the punishment of lashing. Mm. And again, there her detention is arbitrary. Mm. So in both of these cases, we're trying via our, our expert who works on Saudi Arabia to, to try and have some impact on this case, mm. trying to um, lobby the Saudi Arabian government on human rights cases is very, very difficult. Mm. Um, corporal punishment is a violation of human rights. Absolutely mm. clear. All the international uh, law on this is very clear. And so for that alone, she should not be subjected to this punishment. And she should have had a lawyer, and she should have had a clear process. Mm. But um, it's, it's not at all easy working on human rights violations in Saudi Arabia. So we will continue to try to push on both these cases. that you will work with or cooperate with? Well, we work with, um, with everyone mm. <laughs> as much as possible. Um, what we, the people we naturally work with are human rights organizations, um, um, Egyptian human rights organizations primarily, of course, but we also work with individual lawyers who work on particular cases. 
um, syndicates sometimes, either you know, loose groupings, I mean the Tahrir doctors for example, or an informal mm -hmm. grouping uh, uh, of doctors, mm -hmm. but also you know, we will try to go to the sources uh, themselves. Um, we, we don't work with um, the government ever. Do you, you cooperate with the Human uh, Rights Council? The National Council for Human Rights, mm -hmm. we've, uh, we've, we've met with them over the years. We, we don't really do, as an organization, we don't do joint projects or seminars or conferences. We're an organization that only does research uh, and, and advocacy, you know, mm -hmm. meeting and, 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 and lobbying for particular cases. Mm -hmm. But we, so we meet with the NCHR to consult with them on various issues, to understand what they're working on and, and what ways we can also um, uh, accentuate that work. And but primarily with the Egyptian human rights community, mm -hmm. um, also you know with independent journalists who work on particular cases. Mm -hmm. So there's always cooperation on the information sharing, on the consultation process, on on how to do that work, and also at the international level because there's also you know obviously in Geneva there's the Human Rights Council, there are various human rights committees, and so here again NGOs will often coordinate mm -hmm. um, the messaging that they submit to these international bodies. Another important uh, topic that I would like to talk uh, with you about, uh, Hiba, is the issue of human trafficking. Now, this is a very serious issue, uh, again, a very a big problem that we are suffering here from in Egypt, and it seems that it is not getting the enough attention, if I may say, despite uh, the tremendous efforts by the international uh, IOM, the, uh, the International Organization for Migration. Uh, the National Council for Childhood and Motherhood, NCCM, uh, the various ministries, uh, the law that has been issued in this regard uh, back in May 2010, uh, the uh, anti-human trafficking law, still this is a problem. After the revolution, the problem uh, became even worse because we had uh, security problems, we had borders problems, we had other problems. So uh, if I may say, the, the things got worse when it came to human trafficking. I want to know from you as a human rights activist, how do you see it here in Egypt? I mean, you're absolutely right in the way you phrased uh, the, the, the question. It's, it's an extremely serious problem. There isn't enough awareness and we have an excellent law. So those are the mm. three components, I think. I think a lot of people don't know very much about trafficking. It's, it, trafficking is a very, very serious um, international crime. Um, the law that was passed in 2010 is actually an excellent law. Um, by international standards. It has a lot of protection for victims' rights. It's a very detailed law. Mm -hmm. So we already have that tool, but it hasn't been implemented. So that's mm -hmm. the main issue. Out of lack of awareness um, or also a lack of prioritization in terms of political will. I think what we've seen recently is at least some investigations initiated in, in two kinds of trafficking. In cases where um, early early marriage of young Egyptian minor marriage, um, yes. sometimes mm -hmm. uh, these young Egyptian women, uh, often from poorer backgrounds or from rural areas, are taken to the Gulf uh, to be married off, and and this mm -hmm. is one form mm -hmm. of not necessarily taken. Sometimes the the the, the rich uh, come here to Egypt and marry them here. Um, Still. In, in, in both different cases, yes. and there are obviously also brokers involved. Yes. So there is a financial transaction involved. And the child, because any, anyone under the age of 18 is a child, mm. has, no, has no say in this and, and needs to be protected from that. Again, so this is one, one of the important issues defined by uh, Law 64. This is why it's very comprehensive, because it defines who is a child exactly. under the age of 18. So. Exactly. exactly. Mm. Uh, the, other, the other type of cases that we've seen recently are some foreign domestic workers. Um, there was one prosecution uh, investigation by prosecutors that was initiated about three, four weeks ago when an Indonesian worker fell and from the fourth floor of the building and, and died. And the prosecutors then discovered that her employer, who was a Qatari policeman, was locking her in and had uh, kept back her salary. And that, so those are the components also of trafficking. So at least an investigation was initiated under the trafficking mm -hmm. law. And I think that's an important precedent. The third type of trafficking that is really widespread in Egypt, and unfortunately we haven't seen any response yet on it, is trafficking in Sinai. Now, Sinai, there are multiple security situ problems there at the moment, and organized crime has been a longer-term problem. I mean, there is trafficking of weapons, obviously, and that's a security concern. But what we in the human rights community are trying to flag is that there are also trafficking of African migrants that are happening there. And what happens is that many of these migrants are trying to reach Israel. And of course, that makes them very unpopular in terms of public opinion in Egypt. So we're not talking about um, you know, why they're actually there, but once they're there, they're detained by these uh, criminals, what by organized criminal groups. Mm. They are tortured, 
the women are raped, sometimes their organs women, stolen. There are reports of their organs being stolen, and at that point, the traffickers are demanding, you know, in 2009, they were asking for $2,500 to release them. These days, they're asking for $33,000, mm. and nobody can raise that kind of money. So what happens is that they make the African migrant call their relatives abroad, and they torture them on the phone to increase pressure on the relatives to fundraise. Mm. And so you get, for example, Eritrean groups abroad trying to raise this money. Now, this is horrific from a human rights perspective that this is happening, but it's also a security issue. It's a law enforcement issue. Mm -hmm. Organized crime should not be allowed to occur. And while we understand that the security situation in Sinai is complex, I think the government also needs to prioritize the human trafficking aspect because it's not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's not good for the migrants. It's not good for security. And the government's obligation under the trafficking law are, are clear. They need to intervene to rescue mm -hmm. the victims of trafficking, to protect them, mm -hmm. and to shut down the trafficking networks. Because unfortunately, it's, it's a good way of making it's money. It's a very serious issue that uh, needs more effort. Again, despite uh, the great efforts and tremendous efforts by the NCCM and the IOM, still n more needs to be done. We, as citizens, we need to be more aware. We need to uh, uh, be more alert when it comes to uh, the various forms of human trafficking. Egypt Director at Human Rights Watch. I enjoyed very much talking to you today. We Thank raised very, uh, very important points. To Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Women's World. We certainly hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be meeting you again next week, same time. Until then, bye-bye.